There we go. Over. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, Chris Collins uh, from Friends in the US. Congratulations to you and all of the colleagues in the US who have spent a lot of time um, over the last few months uh, pushing towards this moment, um, which is now just the beginning of all of the work. Um, so thank you for joining us on a day uh, that's not a normal day of work um, for you, but um, for just joining us at the last minute and just talk us through this. Tell us what you know so far. And uh, now the speculation all turns to exact timing, exact space, and who's taking the lead and all those kinds of things, but just talk us through it. Welcome. And again, Grant, congratulations to you and all the US colleagues who've been working on this. And to the Secretariat, of course, Pauline and friends, of course, you've also been working on this. <laughs> but Chris, from you. Yeah, well, congratulations to everybody. Um, I think this is really great on a few fronts. <laughs> um, in part because, you know, we have seen the Biden administration be pretty forward leaning in terms of um, uh, responding globally on COVID. And, and, and so I think this is, you know, I, th I think they're ambitious um, and uh, I think they want to galvanize uh, the world around global health investments and health systems investments. So I think this is really great, you know, and, and, um, I think they really get it on ending AIDS, TB, and malaria as um, priorities and as part of the future of, of health and fighting pandemics. Um, there's a lot of support within the administration for this. I mean, it, it was a long time coming, the final decision, but, but actually uh, all that run up meant a lot of discussion within the administration from, from the State Department to USAID to National Security Council and the White House um, in Capitol Hill. And it just was time to really build a lot of support with individuals. And um, so I think we're, you know, uh, you, you know, today's a celebration day and I know the work starts from here, but I think uh, this is great news and I'm, I'm totally excited. And I, you know, and I think this gives us lots of opportunities now to, to, um, to get the word out and start the work on replenishment. So I'm looking forward to it. Great. Um, and I would just, uh, that's great, that's helpful. Um, I was having flashbacks uh, to the 2013 replenishment in the US um, um, last night as this announcement came through. And so just really looking forward to, to fleshing out the details as they become available and you letting us know how that's you know coming together and how we can collaborate mm -hmm. and where the US can you know really use its, um, its convening power to leverage, um, you know, to leverage other donors and other conversations that need to get started um, to get us where we want to get to on the replenishment. I would, I see Christoph, I see your hand raised and I'll go to you next, but if anybody does want to jump in on anything around this and if there's other US colleagues on the call or just anyone else with questions, let's just take a few moments for this now um, and then we'll kind of get back to our previously scheduled agenda. Um, but this is just really, you know, this is just new and exciting news. So glad we could uh, had a timely uh, moment here where we could take advantage of talking about it. But Christoph, go ahead and any others, please feel free to raise your hand or note in the chat if you'd like to jump in. Right. I mean, of course, from my side, Chris, I mean, uh, you know, fantastic news. Congratulations to you and the whole team. This uh, is really so important. Also, congratulations to you, Pauline, and the whole team at the Global Fund Secretary and to the whole GFA network, I might say, as the host of the GFA network now. Um, this is such a great news and arguably the most important moment in the replenishment campaign when you can announce who will host. That I don't think there is any other decision that is important for the outcome of replenishment than the host. And of all the potential options, the US was always, has always been by far the best option, but no, it's never, you can never take it for granted. So um, now it's out there, Chris, this is really, great news i don't underestimate what it takes you know until the finish line you know to make that successful which was the same in, in 2013 katie right um uh, the second time that the us is hosting a global fund replenishment um the first country that is uh, doing a second kind of hosting so that's that's also great but um it it almost you know increases now the importance of the work of GFUN because it re will require a kind of global the Herculean effort to kind of really make best use of this opportunity because it will only work if the rest of the world comes together as well. 
Um, so um, fantastic news and um, in a sense that's a starting point for a long campaign uh, towards the actual pledging moment. Thank you. Thanks, Christoph. Pauline, go ahead. No, I just wanted to, to reiterate some point that have been already made, but uh, a big congratulations to Chris, friends, uh, friends of the Global Fight, the US advocates, and the overall advocates family, because it was like really a, a joint effort. And indeed, great, great news that is confirmed and officially confirmed. We have it on paper, and uh, we can even mm -hmm. mention it in slides now. Because you all know that until uh, you know replenishment is, is officially confirmed, it's not confirmed, and anything can happen. So now, where it's really important for 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 the advocate uh, group and the GFAN family is now we can plan. We can plan with assurance, and you know, in, in some like some the different campaign from the different uh, groups, uh, knowing that this is. This is secured, and 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 we can go in that direction. So so that's and that's really great to have it, you said that early because, you know, I mean we've been uh, waiting for some time, and anyway, so so November is is already like really good uh, to have these like long period ahead for for a great, uh, meaningful and powerful campaign from the civil society uh, advocates. So ready to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Chris or other US colleagues, any sort of final thoughts on this for today? We'll be hearing so much more <laughs> over the next few months and, and, and working with you, but any final thoughts before we wrap up this? Yeah, well, I, I would just say, um, I just to echo people, um, you know, again, <laughs> today's a holiday here and a day of celebration on this, but um, I know that you know, what's coming is a truly global effort. <laughs> uh, and um, I'm trying to wrap my mind around what that even looks like. But I, I know that what the US does from here is going to be really dependent on what what they're hearing, you know, from other donors and what the environment is like out there. So I, I think uh, my sense is our work starts really soon <laughs> to, uh, to uh, work, you know, all over the world to, to kind of, you know, galvanize the investment that we know we need. So um, uh, I just really looking forward to working with all of you on that. I just also, I really want to thank Pauline and the whole secretariat. Um, it has been this great partnership always, but on this, on this one too, it's just been um, total great partnership and uh, congrats to the secretariat. And so anyway, I'm excited, um, a little blurry eyed, but um, ready to go as of tomorrow. Great. Thank you so much, Chris, and thanks for those thoughts. I did see some very late night in Geneva tweeting um, shortly after that announcement and wondered who after the board meeting had to like wake up in the middle of the night and start dealing with that. But, um, you know, very exciting and, and uh, you know, just, uh, you know, for everybody else who hasn't been through a replenishment before, um, you know, GFAN will continue to host these types of conversations, um, you know, on a regular basis and we'll, we'll, we'll continue to focus together on sort of the key pieces of work that are going um, towards the replenishment and relying heavily on the colleagues in the still to be announced preparatory um, meeting country, as well as US colleagues now that they are formally the hosts. Um, to really guide us and how to make those um, events, but those moments um, as successful as possible. So um, this is quite a big deal in sort of in, in our world. So, and we look forward to keeping up these conversations. So um, thank you, Chris. Thank you for joining us at short notice and on your holiday. Um, and we will um, and we will just get back to our, our sort of previously scheduled calendar, but you know, lots more to be discussed. Um, Thanks, Chris. Um, so we did, um, I did just want to just mention just at the top of the call that, of course, for those of you following it closely, the Global Fund did have its 46th board meeting this week, Monday through Wednesday in Geneva. Well, I should say the secretariat staff were in Geneva. Everybody else was online somewhere from wherever they were. Um, so some early mornings and some very late nights for many people. Um, but some of the key items that were um, discussed at this board meeting, and you probably have seen um, the announcement that was made as well about the passing of the strategy um, narrative at the board. So that was a really key um, item um, as many of you have been and as we have been participating in various discussions between partnership forums and other discussions over the 
last year um, that was approved, the narrative was approved, so that was an important step in terms of finalizing the strategy by early next year um, and continuing to be able to work on the KPIs, but also um, get the investment case um, ready um, and meeting the, the, the strategy. And, and then three other things that, that were fairly important um, on the agenda. I'll, all of it was important, of course, in terms of the proper functioning of the fund, but um, key items, um, there was a, a lot of discussion around the key performance indicators for the new strategy and how that process is rolling out. Um, and so you may expect to see some communications from us um, to find out uh, there is a number of external experts or just external partners who are being engaged through the KPI development process. So you may hear more about that from us and we're hoping to be able to share information out of that as it's being um, Sort of as they are sort of being developed um, to make sure that um, we're supporting those who are leading in these efforts to get you know opportunities for consultation if they need it um, and just opportunities for updates through that process. Um, there was also um, sort of an update around the seventh replenishment. Of course, it didn't include the hosting announcement because it took place, you know, uh, eight hours later. I think the hosting announcement came out. Um, but you know, there was an action plan for the seventh replenishment that was um, that was shared, and I think it's the kind of thing that we can expect to see from the secretariat um, over the coming months. Um, different updated reiterations of that, and then I think the big item, um, which I can't speak much to yet, I haven't personally seen whether the all of the decision points have been um, published yet they usually are fairly quickly and apologies it's early in my day so i just haven't had a chance to check with other things going on but there was a conversation around adjusting the global disease split um which determines sort of uh the broad sort of parameters for um allocation uh, methodology for after the next replenishment um there was a decision that was taken um and i um and I think we'll be hearing from members and other actors who were involved in sort of the discussions around them about how that went and what some of the next steps are, which will primarily be for the eighth replenishment so that we make sure that we're starting the conversation around um, the global disease split um, quite a bit sooner. But just to say, and again, the decision points, I don't know if they've come out, but again, there was a positive decision that does adjust the disease split after a certain, um, after a certain threshold has been reached. So we'll be sharing that information. And again, apologies. I didn't have a chance to check for it before now, but we'll be sharing that information. Conte and I are working on a bit of an update because we were able to participate as observers. Lots of you who also participate as observers usually do share information. So we'll be sharing that out over the next coming weeks. And on the 25th of November, we will be um, having representatives from each of the three delegations, communities and the two NGO delegations who will join us here on the GFAN call for a, a, for a debrief um, from the board meeting after they've had a chance to exhale and uh, catch their breath um, after the last sort of week and a half of intense conversations around um, the board meeting. So um, yeah, great. Thanks, Max, for joining us, sweetie. Um, so, um, so that's just the board. We will have an opportunity to um, thank you, Tara, for posting the decision points. So I don't have to be too, uh, uh, too circumspect about it. Um, so that's it about the board meeting. We will have more of a debrief and, and keep looking for more communications about that. Um, and so then the next thing that we just wanted to be able to give you a quick update on is around the, the global strategy meeting that GFAN held in October. So um, Conte, maybe we could just go to the next slide. Most of these, um, most of the information that uh, I'm just sharing here with you, I don't want to you know, go through it in great detail with all of you, but was information that we shared um, at the global strategy meeting where we had um, people from around the world, but not all of our members, unfortunately. Um, but so um, I just wanted to be able to share this and it will be available with the notes from this call, but just to, again, sort of show the work that we do as GFAN and how we're planning to both um, to sort of enact our strategy as GFAN and our key sort of strategic objectives um, over the next um, sort of year with all of you um, in, the, in the lead up to the replenishment. Um, and then if we can just go to the next slide. Um, this was just um, some key work that we're doing as the Secretariat ahead of um, 
before the end of this year, sorry, um, which is that we will be launching our sort of ask of the Global Fund Replenishment. I'll speak to that in a second a little bit more. We're redesigning our website. Um, we are going to be hosting a series of calls between the end of this year, very early in 2022, on pandemic preparedness to continue the conversations um, that we have been having um, in different spaces around pandemic preparedness and the Global Fund's role um, in pandemic preparedness as the strategy continues to be developed, there seems to be a need to convene some, some conversations about that where we can discuss openly and honestly what different concerns uh, and challenges that people see with those roles and what we would like to see as um, communities and civil society on that. Um, we're also working towards some, um, some key meetings, uh, possibly of the uh, civil society and community representatives to global health institutions early next year and starting early preparations for AIDS 2022, which if you haven't seen it come out yet, it is happening in Canada in late July, early August of next year, and early registrations open on the 16th of November. I don't, I don't have any further information than that, but just to say we're watching that space and we'll continue to share information around that and just some of the key events um, that we'll be working on. Um, so again, just wanting to quickly share with you all some of the information that was shared at that meeting so that um, we're doing our best um, uh, to share it as broadly as possible. On the next slide, um, maybe um, this is about uh, what we believe the ask for the um, for the Global Fund seventh replenishment should be. And we were holding off a little bit in terms of launching our ask until we um, had the hoped for announcement last night of the replenishment hosting. Um, and it's to say that we will be launching that report on the 23rd of November uh, on a call and you will get information about that um, next week um, and we'll confirm the time um, as well. And Sorry, it's a little chaotic here just because it start like trying to get the kids out to school. So apologies for the for the background stuff. Um, but essentially for us uh, and what we discussed at the global strategy meeting with many of you was that the demand is clear. We need bold action. And, you know, a word that I heard used at the um, at the board meeting this week from a UNAIDS partner was this cannot be a, an austerity replenishment. This cannot be a replenishment where we talk about um, constricting, you know, constricting resources um, and where we allow ourselves to believe that, you know, we can get by um, on less or the same. This has to be a replenishment where we are really pushing for bold, ambitious action and that needs resources because as we saw with the results report and so on, it, this is really critical. So from our perspective, we've been working on an ask with a very simple methodology that looks at the proportional share for global fund of the most recent resource need estimates for the three diseases and a standalone ask around investments in community led and community based health systems workers programs activities etc um, so we're looking forward to bringing that all to you ahead of that launch um, and once we've launched it, we will be working with any of you who would be interested in doing more regional or group specific type launches of that with any um, groups or networks that you work with um, and, and working towards publishing a series of complimentary briefs between now and the end of March on various sort of you know, topics that are important um, to discuss in the context of replenishment that we can't get into in the, the first paper, which is essentially a well, not that short actually, but you know, a seven or eight page um, examination of what the, the fiscal need is and the large sort of um, the bigger theme. So we will be coming back um, to that with you. Um, on the next slide, I just wanted to share a little bit about some of the key themes that came up for all of us um, in the meeting. Um, and I think that the, I think, despite the fact that we all would have liked to have met in person and we all probably should have met maybe a little bit earlier this year, I think it in the end provided a very sort of timely opportunity for advocates to reflect on sort of past strategies and prepare for future advocacy for the for the seventh replenishment. And so uh, I think some of the key um, themes that sort of emerged, both those that are sort of there on the slide, but you know, firstly, the global fund remains a critical part of the global health ecosystem and it its work drives progress in fighting the diseases and creates resilient health systems and, and is the foundation for fighting current and ending current and, and, and putting better building blocks in place for future pandemics. And its role within the larger sort of global health ecosystem has significant implications for the seventh replenishment um, and implementation period. Secondly, implementing countries, we cannot 
kind of fool, we cannot fool ourselves in this. Implementing countries are in crisis, facing economic recession and increased debt burdens, um, ongoing strains on the health systems due to COVID and the need to make up lost ground on the three diseases. And ongoing support from the Global Fund is going to be really critical to keep on track or get back on track. And co-financing and domestic resource mobilization strategies need to reflect this new reality. And that's been a key part of the conversation at various points that we've had and that other many of you have had with the Secretariat around the investment case and the need for uh, clarity and understanding. And we were able to have some colleagues from the Secretariat join us um, in particular during the GFAN meeting um, to discuss domestic resource mobilization specifically. And my understanding is it was a really good conversation. And then just finally, in terms of you know, what emerged from that meeting for us is that um, advocates in donor countries all, are also facing very difficult contexts for resource mobilization advocacy and will need a strong case um, to, for continued focus on the Global Fund and the three diseases, and that demonstrating the value add of the Global Fund and its impacts, including on COVID-19 and domestic resource mobilization, will be critical. So, I think I might have spoken a little bit too fast, and I apologize for that if I have, but for many of you, this isn't anything new or newsworthy, but just maybe a confirmation that uh, there was no magic, uh, magic, I don't know, what's the right word? I'm thinking silver bullet, it's not a magic bullet, but you know, there was no sort of magic answer that we came up with at the meeting to make everything um, happen uh, smoothly and, and, and get us to you know, many, many more billions of dollars. However, um, we, did have a good, uh, we did have good conversations and some of those themes we were able to explore in more depth and we'll be continuing to try and provide um, opportunities through calls and opportunities through briefings um, to, um, to share um, to share this work, um, so I do see I do see um, Rachel having posted an update from GFAN Africa and GFAN Asia Pacific and work that they're doing um, to acknowledge and thank the U.S. for their hosting of the seventh replenishment. Rachel, I don't know if you wanted to jump in and add anything else to that. Thank you for putting it in the chat. But I would just also just open the floor for any questions around the GFAN meeting um, or any. For those of you who were there, whether there was anything that you learned or anything that you heard that has really stuck with you that you wanted to make sure that you shared with others here um, today on the call. So Rachel, I don't know if you wanted to jump in or if you were putting it in the chat so you wouldn't have to, um, but also just welcoming others for any questions or other comments. Thanks, Katie. This is Rachel Ong. I'm the regional coordinator for Jeep and Asia Pacific. Um, and so this morning we woke up to really fantastic news um, of, of the U.S. hosting the replenishment. So thank you so much to all the colleagues, especially our U.S. colleagues, for all the hard work that uh, has gone into um, pinning down the U.S. administration for this. So we've been in touch on email with some of you as well in terms of some of the key messaging and who we need to tag. We'll send out specific instructions um, and guidance on who to tag on the Twitter post, the specific timing. We hope we'll reach the top 10 list of, of tiers um, use, using this. So we'll, the, 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 the basic idea is so that we will get as many people to like repost um, posts on, on thanking the US as much as possible within a, a time frame on, on Twitter. It might not be so um, helpful for the US, I think, um, but you will wake up in the US to very nice, in, in that time zone, to very nice messages on, on Twitter around this. Uh, we'll get um, in-country partners to actually tag the cons, the embassies and consulates in the US in their countries um, in, in that tweet as well. So it would also pave the way for the global week of action that we're planning very similar to what we did with the love more good for campaign the last time which many of you um joined to make it so successful so so this is the start of the campaign we're also launching our campaign for the seventh replenishment on the 9th of december um we'll share the details soon on the chief and the surf and so apologies again to our, co our our colleagues in the u.s time zone that this is not going to be too um helpful for you but we'll keep the um we'll put the recording available online afterwards as well so thank you all and we look forward to working very closely together to make this um difficult times work out for us thank you thanks rachel
really helpful update and um, we'll look forward to more information on all of those things. But um, right ahead of uh, Thanksgiving in the US making giving our thanks to the US seems very appropriate for this uh, for this latest move. Any other sort of questions or comments um, around the GFUN meeting or anything else that we've discussed or questions for Rachel around that update? Just use the raise hand or unmute or just let us know in the chat. Okay. Uh, oh, Deepak, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you very much for a uh, wonderful uh, sharing. And uh, I'd love to know if there are uh, some arrangement to, to also talk about uh, this COVID vaccination and all the injustice uh, that we are experiencing, especially in the third world. Uh, if there is any update uh, so that we can uh integrate all the advocacy reports around the world that would be great because doing things in bits and pieces may not result i mean the expected outcome uh, can would you please highlight something on this deepak i can i can definitely say um that i'm sure that there are many colleagues here on this call who are deeply engaged in some of that work around um, the inequitable uh, access to COVID vaccines. Um, and what I might suggest to you is I'll pop you with a few links after this um, to connect you with some other work that we do as GFAN to support the civil society and community representatives who sit within the ACT Day structure, which is that WHO led, but where the Global Fund and other global health institutions sit um, in terms of uh, discussing, you know, essentially exactly that, the rollout of both vaccines, but also diagnostics and therapeutics, as well as support to health systems. So I can share a little bit more information with you about how to connect to some of that, those conversations and some of that work and some of what civil society and communities who are engaged in that space have been asking for um, around that. But I would welcome anybody else, um, you know, who's listening and, and just heard Deepak's question to share any links um, to uh, to work in, in the chat as well, or areas where, you know, areas where Deepak could um, uh, uh, find other opportunities for collaboration um, around those issues and we do we do talk about it here in GFN DPAC it's just um, um, that we we do also have calls that are more specifically focused on that at other times if that makes sense thank okay. you very much yeah. okay yeah I'll pop I'll pop I'll pop you some stuff in the in in, in the chat here in just a minute any other questions um, or comments from colleagues? Okay, great. And thank you for that question, Deepak. Um, and so I'm, we're just going to turn it to, we're just going to actually turn it back to sort of all of you. Um, we're going to start, I'm going to turn it over to Pauline from the Global Fund Secretariat. And just, we wanted to make sure that at this juncture, a few weeks before World AIDS Day, that we were having an opportunity to connect and share about some of the activities um, and opportunities for collaboration that we have amongst GFAN members around World AIDS Day, what the focus is for us, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but you know, we're, we're focusing on the launch of our ASK document a week and a half ahead of World AIDS Day so that hopefully that is a part of that conversation but knowing what a really busy space that is we're not formally calling it a World AIDS Day event or anything like that but hoping that it will be helpful in the broader advocacy and work that you are all doing um, to raise that in World AIDS Day but um, we're just going to pass it to a few colleagues here to share updates on, key, on some of the events that they are doing and some of the work they are doing ahead of World AIDS Day and we're going to start with Pauline um, and colleagues from the Global Fund Secretariat so Pauline I'll pass it over to you and then we'll go to Peter Wiesner and others um, to share their updates. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so in terms of uh, external facing activities for World Days Day, we are not uh, the Global Fund Secretariat organizing any standalone uh, events, you know, like on the model of what we've been uh, organizing in the virtual world uh, uh, in the context of the, the UNGA, the General Assembly in September or earlier on in June. But uh, we are supporting and we are uh, participating in a number of, uh, of, of events organized by civil society partners like Peter Sands will uh, be speaking in the great conference the, that will take place in Germany and virtually um, organized by Peter and that Peter will, will present uh, soon after our intervention. Uh, and Global Fund Management will also participate in, in other events organized by partners. 
Um, that's for the events and for communication. My colleague Emmanuel from social media team, who I think uh, is participating in the GFAN call for the first time, has joined and will share a few points on the plans from the communication team. So, Emmanuel, uh, if you want to, to share those points with the group. Yes, Welcome thank you so much, Pauline. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. It's such an enthusiastic group of people. Uh, I sure want to always be part of this call. It's interesting. Uh, on communication side, I will be writing on the theme that UN AIDS came with this year, which is end inequalities, end AIDS, and end pandemics. We'll be, we're currently working on a social media toolkit that will be released a week before uh, World AIDS Day and will be available to you uh, to include like the key messages, the talking points uh, that we will be using. The idea that we're working on is uh, pushing uh, like our content amplifying self-testing as a key tool that has transformed uh, the space within HIV, within the HIV space in the 20 years of the Global Fund. And we also we'll also have a piece from Ukraine as well, uh, forced photo essay that will be part of the toolkit. And you have links to the article and to the websites. And we'll revisit some of the key stats that we visited throughout the 20th anniversary campaign. And if we're trying to see if there's any updates on those statistics, then we'll they'll be also included in the social media toolkit. And we will also be happy to amplify. Uh, on our social media channels, like any of the other initiatives that the GFAN community uh, will be also pursuing around that particular time. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Pauline. Um, were there other colleagues from the Secretariat, Pauline, just to double check before I ramble on? Okay, good. No, that's really helpful and thank you. And I, I know that um, Emmanuel, for, for our members getting advance notice that something will be coming about a week before is just really helpful. Um, and it's helpful to know sort of what the themes, um, especially uh, and the focus around self-testing and stuff that you're doing. So thank you for that. Um, and welcome to your first GFAN call and hopefully not your last. Um, so um, I'll pass it over to Peter Wiesner. Um, sorry, I'm not sure. Yes, Peter. There you okay. are. Yeah, sorry, my computer's yes, having yes. some troubles today. So apologies if I look a little confused. And Peter, sorry, should I, sorry should I sound too relaxed? I'm actually on vacation in Greece. and <laughs> But since I got the invitation to talk about our conference, and since we are so happy to, uh, to have this big conference on World AIDS Day, uh, and thanks to Global Fund for for the resources that uh, that that, that uh, sort of enabled us, us doing that, I, I talk a little bit about the conference and uh, what we did so far. So there will be on World AIDS Day conference. Uh, it's named Global House Champion Germany? Question mark from HIV to SARS-CoV-19. What have we learned? What have we not learned? So the conference will be about the impact of COVID-19 on the HIV response. It comes timely for us. I'm I'm sure you're aware that we at the moment don't have a government. So we had elections, so there will be a new government. Uh, Chancellor Merkel, she was a truly, I mean, partly, she was a global health champion, I would say, not, not in terms of COVID-19 and vaccination, as you all know. Uh, but um, we, we, of course, hope that the next government will sort of uh, live up to, to that example that, uh, that Chancellor Merkel sort of gave us so, so that's why that's why we we have the conference in order to to influence our our policy maker uh, and of course head towards the next replenishment we are absolutely happy that the replenishment takes place in the united states so congratulations from us as well we are a little bit jealous because we thought we could hail host it in germany but you have it in the states and that's even um, better um so so to prepare the conference we are in the middle of it at the moment we have a fantastic list of speakers it's 100 percent uh, community driven, I would say. So there are many, many speakers from the community with interesting topics. Uh, and some of you are um, involved. So in order to prepare the conference, we did make interviews with, chief, with some of the chief and speakers, Gordon uh, and uh, 
Joyce and Naomi from uh, from from Kenya. Uh, so we recorded them. We will produce little videos uh, and the short stories or the, the the sort of feature story, not short so feature stories. They are already uh, published or will be published. So I can share them with with you in English uh, after that call. The conference itself will be in English, in German and in Russia. And what we would like to have from you as, as our colleagues and partners, please, please, please share uh, the information about the conference. It's truly international. It's absolutely important for us that as many uh, um, participants as possible are, are there. So please register, share the information that this event will take place. Um, a couple of days before the conference, there will be a, a press uh, conference where Winnie Bianima from UNAIDS and Peter Sands are going to talk, to speak for, for half an hour. The, the, the event will take place one hour and Valeria Rashinska, she's a treatment activist from Ukraine, will speak as well. So if somebody of you does um, um, media work, uh, you could register to this event as well. If you are interested, just get back to me on, on that and I can I can send you the link. Um, so uh, about the conference, it will start with, uh, with a plenary session. Peter Sands is going to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on, uh, on, on, on the Global Fund um, um, work. And of course, I, I would say probably he, he will mention the, the, the replenishment as well. And um, and then um, UNH chief Vinnie Bianyema is going to speak about the international picture and uh, Cindy um, from um, Botswana, the name Cindy Kalemi, some of you might know her, she's an activist, uh, an HIV positive person will talk about the impact for communities and people living with HIV, the impact of COVID-19 on, on her personal life and her experiences on human rights and all of that. So this will be a super exciting uh, planner, first op opening panel actually, uh, moderated by Rachel Ong. So hi, Rachel, and thanks so much that you are there. We are so, so super happy that you, you join in. And Christine Stiglin, uh, you know her as well. Um, she will be moderating as well. And each of the session will be, uh, there will be a rapporteur who is going to, to, to write up a summary and a brief report from a community perspective. And this will be done by, by Daniel Downs and uh, that some of you know. And then we have three following sessions and one of the sessions we parked, we, we sort of gave them away uh, and um, not not to Africa this system, but to Asia, because this this relates a little bit more to the work that we've been doing as Action Against AIDS in the past. So this will go and this will be hosted by um, by a chief on Asia Pacific. So Rachel, maybe <laughs> uh, this comes as a surprise. If you want, just talk a minute about that session. Uh, this will, it will be moderated by me. But since you know all the speakers and it's just absolutely impressive and, and fantastic, some words on that and then I continue. And I hurry up, so I, it takes a little bit too long probably. <laughs> Rachel, please. Sure, so just, just very quickly, we'll have um, a couple of presentations from country and regional partners, including from Vietnam, um, from um, APN Plus, which is the Asia Pacific Network of People with HIV, AIDS and Abkhazo, talking about regional um, work and the impacts of COVID-19 um, and how communities have been able to respond given the, the investments from the Gold Fund through um, the flexibilities and the C19RM. And we'll move to panel discussion with a, a couple of uh, key leaders from our region, including a young trans um, uh, activist um, from Sri Lanka. Um, then we will have Alexander Fries, who's the board member from um, Germany. We'll have uh, also, uh, um, Daksa Patel from India and Del Magwari from Indonesia. Um, India and Indonesia being very key for our region given that they'll be hosting the G20 presidencies over the next two years. Full stop. So thanks, thanks so much. And I hurry up now. So there will, will two sessions are going to follow. 
and one of the speakers will be Christoph Ben and Sasha Volkina from GMB Plus. So Christoph, I hope you're still here. We are, we are really happy that you sort of uh, join in because this will be absolutely a, a fantastic session. It will be about uh, the, 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 the changing global house architecture since COVID-19 hit in and all the proposals that are currently discussed. So, um, so we are going to discuss that with uh, uh, members from the parliament and moderated by community people. And the last session will be about um, house financing, about uh, the investment case. Uh, somebody from uh, UNAIDS will uh, talk uh, and somebody from the, from, the, from, from the Global Fund, not somebody. Diane is here, Stuart is Diane, Stuart is going to talk, so, so please don't quote me her by saying somebody. So Diane is there and Jamie uh, Asuna from UNAIDS will be there and somebody from Action Against uh, AIDS is going to discuss all the issues with four members of the parliament and this will deal about money and how much uh, Germany is going to give for the next replenishment. So over here, uh, sorry for being too long in the extent, and please, please, please advocate for this conference and please register. It's really international and I promise it's community driven. It's a different event. So thanks so much. Bye. Thanks, Peter. Over. Really, really appreciate all the details. And thanks, Rachel, too. Um, and Tara's popped into the chat for everyone a link to the registration um, for that conference. So um, I know I'm planning to attend um, and others probably already are, but um, please do share that as Peter's asked, as it is critical to their um, work in Germany in terms of setting up the, the advocacy and the work ahead of the seventh replenishment. Um, we also have a colleague from GATE, Erica, who, <laughs> hopefully has recovered a little from the board meeting this week. Um, but Erica, um, just over to you to share um, any activities that are coming up over the next month and around World AIDS Day um, with GFAN colleagues. That, um, and then I'll pass it back to Conte who has a, one or two written updates from other colleagues to share who couldn't be on the call. But over to you, Erica. We can't hear you, Erica, if, if you've had to step away, maybe I'll go to Conte for those updates that we received in, or that update that we received in writing, I think from GNP Plus, um, who couldn't be on the call today, but wanted to share some work. And then we'll go back to you, Erica, to see if, uh, if we can get you, your audio sorted. So Conte. Hi, everyone. Really uh, good. Good day, good evening. So popping the remark from GNP Plus in the chat, uh, essentially they told us about uh, two things. Uh, one is that they will be engaging with the LHV network in conversations around community solidarities, what it means, uh, what it looks like at the moment, uh, considering that a lot of things have to be done uh, remotely and virtually. Uh, so the, the naming is community solidarity and ending inequalities to end AIDS. Uh, and they will also be uh, collaborating to support uh, World AIDS Day events uh, for networks of people living with HIV in South Africa and Mozambique. So this is, uh, this is GNP Plus's plan. And back to you, Katie. Thank you. And again, just checking to see if Erica's audio issue is fixed. I don't think so. Okay, um, maybe she has had to step away for something. Um, Okay, so thank you everyone for, for those updates. We just wanted to pass it over to the rest of you as well. If there's other colleagues who had updates around World AIDS Day or upcoming activities that they wanted to share, then please feel free to just raise your hand uh, or just let us know in the chat if there's anything that you would like to share, especially if there's something that you're hoping to have GFAN colleagues uh, jump in on and support um, and collaborate with you by amplifying your messages or your work or your asks. Any any others? I see Stefania has popped something into the chat. Stefania, did you wanna did you wanna share with everyone? Uh, hi all. Um, just uh, just to flag that uh, as a Global Health Italia network, we are working to a very easy, very short quiz. Uh, 
sorry, uh, in Italian, um, on the um, fake news uh, on uh, HIV AIDS, uh, and uh, there will be uh, some insights uh, on uh, the meaning of uh, um, global health and uh, on the work of the Global Fund uh, and uh, uh, through its 20 years of activity and on fake news. That's all, thank you. That's really interesting. I love that idea of sort of a quiz to sort of check in what people are seeing. Catherine, Kat from HRI, see your hand raised as well. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to flag a couple of things. We're, we're just, for World AIDS Day, we're updating our global state of harm reduction with a short piece rather than a big long report, which we do every couple of years. So this is the off year in which we just update the key figures. So the top line figures around how many countries have needle and syringe programs and opioid agonist therapy in prisons and in the community and a few other important harm reduction programs and whether they have um, harm reduction in national policy. Um, and this year we'll do the short update in connected, connection with the World AIDS Day theme um, and, and highlight the need for you know, increased funding and strong replenishment um, as key to funding harm reduction in, in low and middle income countries. So we'll make sure it comes out on the GFAN list when it's, when it's available. Um, and yeah, the headline is that not much has changed um, and that we're kind of stagnating in terms of progress on harm reduction. Um, but the other thing I just wanted to quickly flag in case there's interest among the group, we're having, instead of having a conference, which we normally have every two years, we're having an online festival, which is slightly um, different and we hope a bit quite exciting for um, the harm reduction community, but also those outside the community that want to talk a bit about harm, uh, about drugs and um, justice and pleasure. Um, it's a different approach. It's, yeah, we've got, we've got a whole host of brilliant speakers um, and we're doing things like fireside chats in keeping with the festival theme um, and arts and well-being is in there as well. In there as well. So, um, I'll put a link for people to register. It's it's free too. Um, yeah, and it should be it should be really great. It's it's from the 16th to the 24th, and you can dip in and out of sessions um, and and access everything um, as recorded afterwards as well. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Thanks, Kat. I'm looking forward to joining for some of the sessions myself. So thanks for sharing. Any other updates um, around World AIDS Day or other items that folks wanted to share that are coming up in the next little bit? Not seeing any other hands raised or anybody unmuted at the moment. Um, I'm gonna pass it back to my colleague Conte to run us through just sort of a few last reminders from us around the upcoming World Cafe um, for with GFAN um, also on December 9th, the same day um, that Rachel was speaking about earlier in terms of uh, in terms of their event, but a little bit later in the day. Um, and then we have a few last announcements and, and one uh, introduction to make. So uh, Conte, really quickly over to you around the World Cafe. Thank you, Kate. Kate, uh, you just re-raise your hand, or is that the old one? So I just saw it popping up. Okay, I'm going to assume okay, it's the old, the old one. one. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so hi again, everyone. So I want to quickly discuss the, uh, the World Cafe that Jifan will be organizing. Uh, so it's on the 9th, it's coming up on the 9th of December, and uh, we are looking for applications to come up by the 15th, so it's uh, next Tuesday. Uh, very easy to apply, it's just a 250 word uh, um, abstract to send us. I'm popping in the uh, popping in the chat the link to get uh, you know, that flyer and uh, the templates for the, for the application. So the idea behind the World Cafe is uh, an opportunity for GFAN members to share uh, a project, a piece of research, uh, a conversation uh, with other members of the, of the GFAN network. Uh, and the idea is that uh, we do that in a more informal, social, and interactive environment rather than, uh, you know, like a conference type thing. Uh, it's also, you know, uh, that interactivity would give space as well for a uh, more consultative process to take place. Um, and so as uh, Katie mentioned, it will take place uh, on the 9th of December. Some of the ideas we had of things that, uh, that we would be considering, but it's very open. Uh, so if you are on the delegation of uh, one of the board of, uh, of big partners, uh, Google Fund, Gavi, StopTB, etc., uh, that would be that would be a good opportunity to 
uh, have a meet and greet session with the constituency to talk about uh, what the priorities of the delegation should be, etc. Um, if there is a particular piece of research or a specific project you've been working on that you want to have feedback on or share with uh, share or highlight with partners, that would be uh, also something we would welcome. Um, and if you, you know, and if you want to uh, work collaboratively with people during uh, during the World, Cafe, uh, the World Cafe on on a specific project, that would also be a good idea. Uh, so do reach out to us and uh, again uh, put in the put in the chat uh, a, a Google Drive link for uh, all the all that information, the template for applications, applications that you uh, next Tuesday, just a short abstract, and uh, we're looking we're looking forward to it. Now for a few, sorry, is there any questions uh, on the World Cafe before I move on to to the next announcement? I will take uh, sil the silence for excitement. Uh, now I'm moving on to, uh, so just uh, quickly to cover some of the uh, upcoming calls. So uh, we've mentioned some of them, but I think it's good to just uh, quickly recover them. So next, uh, so in two weeks on the 23rd, uh, it will be the launch of the GFAN 7 through Punishment Ask. As I said, we'll have a few speakers. Uh, we'll share an event of the launch uh, social media kit with, uh, with most of you. Uh, then on the 25th, we'll have a board, uh, a board, uh, board meeting debrief uh, with communities and NGO delegations to the Global Fund Board. Uh, so that will be our regular GFAN call. And finally, uh, we, as we just said, on December 9th, we have a GFAN World Cafe coming up. Uh, all of those will take place at the wonderful time of 8 a.m. ET, uh, 2 p.m. CET, 4 p.m. EAT. Uh, and also, just so that you all know, it's 1 a.m. Uh, in Fiji, though I know it's of little concern to anyone else on the call. Uh, back to you, Kate. <laughs> Thanks, Conte. We do tend to see Conte very much when it's uh, very late and early in the morning for him in the future. So um, thank you for that. Um, and I did just want to pass it back to Rachel really quickly for um, a quick announcement from GFAN AP, um, an introduction, um, and then over to all of you again, if there are any other announcements or any final questions before we wrap up for today. So Rachel, go ahead. So much, Katie. Apologies for taking up so much airtime this time. Um, we're very excited to um, announce a new member to the GFAN AP team and to the broader GFAN family. We've introduced Anna Kriti Singh on the GFAN Visa. She's also joined us on this call. I'll leave Anu to introduce herself, but a very warm welcome to her. We'll, we look forward to contacting many of you um, as the weeks come by um, while we're rolling into the seventh replenishment or dumping our heads into it. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for the for the brief introduction. My name is Anukriti. I'm based in Delhi, India, and I have joined uh, uh, GFAN Asia Pacific as the communications and media officer. Uh, I'm really happy to be here and uh, really excited to uh, work with all of you. Thank you. Welcome. And thanks for joining the call today. Thanks, Rachel, for that. Are there any other um, announcements or any tidbits of information anybody needed to share with colleagues here before we wrap up? Okay. Not seeing anyone. Um, again, welcome, Anu. Thank you all for joining today. Lots more coming up, and we do hope to hear from some of you to share um, applica applications, um, very simple applications for that World Cafe on the 9th, um, because we really do hope it'll be a, a nice way to, to wrap up the year. Christoph, I see your mic unmuted. Did I did I go too fast and there was something else you wanted to share? No, okay. Um, no, no, no. Thank no, you. you're good. Okay, okay. Um, and so just thank you. So uh, looking forward to speaking to you many more times over the next uh, few weeks um, with so much going on ahead of um, end of year, which for, for some is traditionally a, a time to take some leave and some rest, um, but lots to do before we get there. Um, and just looking forward to keeping the communication open, using the listserv to share information and connecting with you all on these calls um, every uh, every other week. So thank you very much, everyone. Don't hesitate to be in touch if you have any questions um, and hope that we hear from some of you around the World Cafe so that we have a fun, um, informal opportunity to catch up at the end of the year before we really um, dive fully into this uh, replenishment year next year. So thank you. Thanks to the Secretariat for joining us today and sharing information. Um, and thanks to all of you for joining. So have a great rest of your days and uh, keep in touch. Take good care.
Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Dankeschön. Bye bye. Enjoy your holiday, Peter. Yeah, we'll open a bottle of Uso now. <laughs> nice. Bye. We should we should bye. all do that at the end of a GPN call. <laughs>